Is this one here, Todd? Okay. You know, I really think uh, you're going to hear more about it on Saturday how I see the upper eyelid in terms of both Caucasian and Asian. But I think we're looking today more for a lower, fuller brow, which may be sort of the antithesis of what you've heard this morning. Um, it's just a different philosophy and a different approach. What you're going to hear during this talk is what I believe would be helpful for both people that don't perform Asian eyelids as well as those that do. So I'm going to sort of divide the talk. And I think it'll get you out of some troubles that I've encountered. So what is a beautiful eyelid in an Asian? Well, I think it's very similar to a Caucasian in many respects. It's a very low, full eye with a very low crease. And you can see that here as well. I think a low crease is also more attractive than a Caucasian. So the anatomy, just as a quick resident review, essentially what happens in some of the Asian eyelids is that there is no insertion point for the uh, elevator into the dermis so that the postseptal fat actually begins to descend further down, causing that narrow palpebral fissure and uh, fuller eyelid uh, contour. So there are many techniques to do Asian eyelids. I really have migrated now almost entirely to the full incision. I'm going to talk to you about why that's the case. I have really not performed suture techniques. I learned it in Japan, but I just figured with all the variable and, and fixation uh, longevity that wasn't a great option. I don't use the partial incision technique anymore, and I really use the full incision technique. The problems I've had with the partial incision technique is that I've had some degrees that I've lost the fold, and there, I don't really see a reason. There's not much improvement in doing an abbreviated incision. Sometimes you can actually see the incision because it's so abbreviated. And because you're banking on a permanent uh, suture to hold your crease, if you lose that suture, you're in trouble. With a full incision, because it's a temporary suture you take out at the end of one week, you've got fixation. So I don't, I'm, I'm fine with it, and that makes me feel much more comfortable. Um, I really like the full, full incision technique. I think it works very, very well. Uh, I give deference to my mentor, Dr. McCurdy out of Hawaii, who's, who these measurements are, are um, he's a co-author of my book, and he's really goes over this very uh, well. And I really almost always just do a small fold today for the reasons I enumerated. This is a schematic from the book that just gives you an idea of how to approach this. Some ideas for the people that actually do perform Asian eyelids. I would say that the key here is I like using a little bit of marcaine, even though it only takes about 30 minutes to do it. Because I use such low doses of lidocaine to, to minimize distortion, a little marcaine helps to carry that forward. And I raise wheels. I don't thread the needle through so that I, risk, I don't risk a hematoma. And that helps uh, minimize distortion. Anytime you get one side being a little more swollen than the other, you can't read symmetry. So I'll go in there and add a little bit to one side if I think that the edema is causing the distortion. And also be very careful not to allow the anesthetic to drip onto the levator. If that happens, I've had one or two cases where the levator has temporary dysfunction and you can't read symmetry. So always work in tandem. Almost everything I do in facial plastic surgery, I do back and forth, and it's all because I do Asian eyelids. My mind is thinking how to go from back and forth to, to stay consistent. Uh, and really find your fat first. If you don't find your fat, you're going to get into trouble. That is your safety landmark, beyond, after which you can find the levator. But find the fat is your safety. And the thing that people don't talk about is a posterior leaf of the orbital septum, which a colleague out of mine, Dr. Kim, out of, of Korea identified and called the pseudo-levator. It's a little wispy, thin fiber that sits in front of your levator. And you should really clean that before you get your levator to get better fixation. So how do you do the full incision? Always mark with a patient supine and the, the skin under tension. That's very important, not under laxity. So the amount of tension is when the eyelashes are, are at perpendicular orientation. That's just showing you the uh, incision. Now that's some technical pearls for those that perform Asian eyelids. This is the core of the, the talk that I want you to pay attention to. If, even if you said, you know what, I, I never want to do an Asian eyelid. I never want to make a double eyelid. I don't want to make a crease. But how do you approach someone, uh, an aging Asian eyelid, in my uh, perspective? I've divided into the without crease, with crease, and a man-made crease, and I'll tell you why. The without crease is an issue. If you see an Asian without a crease and you go in there and you make a crease, well, there's several problems. One is the fact that because they are already have a narrow palpebral fissure, taking some skin out, they're not going to see much change. If you start digging into the postseptal tissues and take fat out, you also risk creating an inadvertent fixation in a, in a variable fixation of that crease. That's a problem. They don't want a crease. And you've got a crappy crease. That's, that's terrible. 
Um, so be careful with that. And what I usually wind up doing is if a patient comes in without an eyelid crease and they want rejuvenation of the upper eyelid, I offer them two options. Option A, I create a crease, and they have to understand what that means. They're going to look slightly different. I make very low creases, though, so it's not much of a change, but they got to know that. And there is a protracted uh, recovery period with that because of some of the swelling, and I'll show you that in a moment graphically. And the other thing, if they don't want it, fat grafting. I, and obviously, I filter my world through fat grafting because I get great results with that. But I'll fill that brow up a little bit, and it looks amazing. And that's what I, those are my two options, and that's it. No, no skin removal by itself without a fixation of the crease, and no just arbitrary postseptal fat removal if you don't mean it to create a crease. With a natural crease, you say, well, that's easy. You know, what the heck? I'm just going to go ahead and just make a crease. And that's true. Technically, it's the same as dealing with a Caucasian. But remember, if you raise that uh, crease in a Caucasian, okay, fine. You raise in an Asian, you change their look dramatically in an unfavorable way, in my opinion. So be careful with that. I don't do brow lifts anymore. When I do a little bit of, of skin removal, I will almost always take fat and put it back in to push that crease and maintain. We talked about maintaining brow position this morning. I maintain lid position. That is very important. Just taking some extra skin can be problematic in an Asian. The final thing is a person that's had a man-made crease or a previous double eyelid procedure. The key here is that most people that are aging today, aging, that is not Asian, aging today that are Asian, had their procedure done in the mid-1980s when that was a height of westernization, aggressive upper eyelid skin removal, fat removal, and high creases. And if they say, well, you know what, I'm looking better now, that's because the dermatocolasis, brow deflation, and brow ptosis has led to that narrowing of the crease. But they still look a bit fake. The reason they look fake is that brow skin is thicker, it's hanging over their eye. You can sort of see it's fake, but they have a low crease. All you got to do is lift up the eye and look at it. And this is a partial incision when I was still doing it. This is about a week out, and then this is about, I think, four or five months out afterwards. This is a one, a one week, one month, and three month result with a full incision. And this is a one week and seven months. I have a one year, I forgot to put it in there, but there's still a little pretarsal edema you can see left. So, in summary, be thoughtful and mindful of ethnicity and maintain naturalness. I hope if you don't remember all the technical pearls of how to perform an Asian eyelid, at least think about some of the thoughts that I presented about the aging Asian eyelid. I'll be talking uh, more in depth at an intensive uh, learning discussion course in the fall meeting uh, coming up in DC for the Facial Plastic Society. Thank you for your attention.